Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Brian Shannon, founder of Alpha Trends. He's a full time trader, educator, author of the highly regarded book, Technical Analysis Using Multiple Time Frames. Brian, how are you doing this morning? Good. How are you? Good morning. Good, yeah, we're ready for some action today uh, in the markets. Uh, could you just give us a, a quick, uh, you know, your market and education background? My market education began uh, as a young boy sitting at my dad's side uh, trying to hang out with him watching Wall Street Week, and that was probably about uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> um, and I just kind of got interested in it from there. I did a couple of small trades early early on um, with money that I earned from various jobs, and, you know, caddy, newspaper routes, that sort of thing, and was really drawn to it. So right out of college, my first job was as a stockbroker, and um I did that for a few years, learned how to be a salesman more than uh, a stock guy. Uh, but it was, uh, and then I started with a company called Generic Trading in New York, which was one of those uh, companies that used to advertise in the, <clears throat> the back of the investor's business daily saying, you know, put up uh, 25000 we'll give you a 10 to 1 leverage. And yep, um, I remember from that. there, that's, that's, that's when I started full time. I've, you know, been doing various things, uh, but, you know, full trade, full time trading. Uh, over the last 20 years. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you're kind of up uh, in, in my age bracket there because I remember watching Wall Street Week with uh, Paul, what was it, Paul Lefevre, was that the guy's name? And uh, they would uh, have the different guests on and Joe Granville and stuff. So that, that that's funny. That goes back a long way. So, uh, so you yeah, been... was... Go ahead. I'm sorry. It was Rick Kaiser that I used to watch. Oh, well, I don't remember Lefevre. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there. Was, I'm thinking of another show there too. Then, uh, okay. So, what what markets do you focus on? Uh, equities, equities, and ETFs. So each day, I look at the uh, ETFs, such as the SPY, the Nasdaq, or the IWM, semiconductors, and financials and analyze those in, in videos for subscribers. And I like to have a general feel of what the market is, and I prefer to use the ETF because you can actually trade them versus looking at, like, SPX. Everyone talks about the levels there. But the, the spot, you can trade it. So, I, you know, I trade that, and we'll, we'll trade some of the levered funds based on uh, how they are setting up. Um, but mainly, I prefer, you know, to... Uh, Bottoms up stock picking uh, based on technical analysis and looking at multiple time frames. So, are you are are you doing day trades, longer trades, or just a in longer term, or just a combination? Uh, kind of a combination. Nothing longer term. Uh, you know, my definition of long term is generally I, I can't remember the last time I held something for more than about two weeks. Okay. So what I what I strive to look for is a good swing trade setup. And then by using shorter term time frames to really fine tune that entry, I like to be fairly precise on the entries. And then um, oftentimes I will day trade those positions, uh, probably more often than not. And, you know, when I have a position that's working for me, then I'll hold a small piece of it for a uh, swing trade. So kind of a, a blend of day trading and swing trading. Okay, so you've been around the block a few times and you got started earlier in career. Uh, could you just share the most important uh, trading lesson that you learned early in your career? The most important stock trading lessons? Is that what you asked me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have a dog in the background there. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I think that a lot of people have issue with uh, is thinking that um, – you know, that the market's always going to come back and that they can buy the dips each time and not not being able to take losers, basically, taking that small loser before it turns into something bigger. We're, we're seeing a little bit of a correction right now in the market, and you know we never know if it's going to be the correction that uh, turns into the better market. So we have to be cautious when the market starts pulling back and uh, wait for evidence that the buyers are actually showing up again. So I think a lot of people have created a lot of bad habits, uh, as they often do, in a bull market where they think, well, it's just another pullback, my stock, will, my stock will come back, and then they start getting into the cycle of trying to justify holding a losing position and add to it and then just really compounding the problem rather than dealing with a problem right away as soon as it pops up and, and taking a, a reasonable stop loss. 
Okay, cutting losses with uh, just a familiar trend that we talk about with a lot of traders on the show, um, as well as analysts. So you you look at your your technical guy, right? And your trades are based on the charts. Are you, you uh, a bar chart, a candlestick chart kind of guy? And what what time frames? You said you look at multiple time frames. You mind sharing uh, some of those time frames with us? Yeah. Good questions. Um, I have, I, I look at candlestick charts, not because I think there's any special magic to, to looking at the actual patterns. Um, I, I think that, you know, they're just more visually pleasing. And, and I had been a bar chart guy for, you know, a decade or so. And then as I gravitated towards doing a subscription service, people like the candles. So I gravitated towards that. Um, so candle versus bar, I, I don't think there's any real difference. You look at what is comfortable for you. And as a swing trader, the the uh, the main time frames I'm looking at, I want to be aware of what the tra- uh, time frame uh, trend is on a longer term time frame, such as a weekly chart, but it doesn't really play into my decision making. The decision making comes down to, and I'll make it kind of general, looking at a daily chart to say what's the primary trend and then my, I'll drill down to an intraday time frame of either 65 minute or 30 minute candles uh, 65 minutes 65 minute where where just I'm curious uh, why you decide to use that time frame you figure everybody that's making their signals off the 60 minute chart is going to happen within 5 minutes and you're going to catch the lag or or what's the reason? No, for that? no, it's actually something much more, more sensible, not sinister than that. It's you know, if you look at the markets open from nine thirty to four o'clock each day, so we have thirteen uh, periods that are thirty minutes long. Okay, so if we're looking at thirty minute candles, then we have thirteen periods each day. If we look at hourly uh, candles, sixty minute candles, what you'll have is you'll have a candle that goes from nine thirty to ten. And then you'll have 10 to 11, 11 to 12, et cetera, through the end of the day. So you have seven candles representing a day, uh, but that first candle only represents 30 minutes of trading. So you're comparing apples and oranges. You have one orange on the open and you have six apples. So in order to, to uh, make it more precise, uh, the market is open, again, 390 minutes each day. So if you divide that by 65, you'll see that we have, or if you divide it by six, rather, then you get 65. So you have six okay. equal candles. So if you're putting moving averages on there, you're not, uh, or, or any indicator, you're comparing apples to apples, not uh, putting extra emphasis on that first 30 minutes uh, and overweighting it when it really doesn't uh, uh, deserve to have that extra weight. Okay. So that on those... Makes sense. With that... No, yeah. it makes sense. So, I didn't mean to be sinister on it, but uh, now you're breaking it down mathematically. It makes a lot of sense. No, no, it's uh, it, yeah, it's just it's just a mathematical, sensible thing. Compare apples to apples, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not the type of guy who says, well, if I look, if everyone was looking at a 10-day moving average, I'll look at a 90-day moving average uh, and get a head start on them. I I think that you know a lot of people try to do that and think that they're going to get some kind of leg up. But really the advantage comes from looking at multiple time frames and realizing that a moving average often acts as support. And why is that the case? Because a lot of times people will stop selling as the stock approaches that level, let's say a 50-day moving average. Other people will start covering shorts as it approaches a 50-day moving average. Sideline cash will come in and start bidding there. So you have less supply and you have more demand. And, and then what we need to do is to look at, so it might see a pullback, uh, going back to the original question, uh, to a 50-day moving average on a, on a daily chart or even a 20-day moving average or something like that. And then I'll look at a shorter-term time frame, such as the 30 or the 65-minute, and try to say, okay, here are the key levels. Does it look like it's building some support in here? And if it gets going to the upside, where does it have the potential to go? So I ask myself, where does it come from? And to, to determine, is it too extended to purchase it, or is it too early because the, the trend is still lower? And second question I, I look to answer is, where does it look like it has the potential to go before it's likely to encounter supply if we're, if we're trading long or, or some demand if we're trading short? And that's the basis of coming up with a risk-reward analysis. So I like to keep it objective like that and then start to say, okay, here are the key levels. I'll set a bunch of alerts on my uh, 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 RealTech platform that I use, 
And I look to shorter term time frames. I'll go to a 10 minute time frame with a five day moving average. I think that uh, for swing trading, uh, the most important moving average you can look at is a five day moving average uh, for direction of the intermediate term trend. So I want to know where am I in relation to that? Uh, is it in what's the trend of that moving average? I want it to flat to, to heading higher. And then I'll drill down to shorter term time frames, even a one minute time frame to, to see uh, who has control for the day. Are we above or are we below a, a volume weighted average price for the day? I don't want to fight the trend for that day and the money flow for that day. So it's combining a lot of different moving averages to really kind of just pinpoint that entry so that I'm not exposing myself to too much risk first and foremost. Okay, got a question out of the chat room. If you're using the MACD, uh, what what settings do you use for um, for shorter time periods? Well, for number one, I don't use the MACD. Um, I have used it in the past, and, and, and I, anytime I do use it, I just use the default settings, which are nine, twenty-two, and thirteen, something like that. I'm not really—I I don't remember what they are, but uh, just the default settings. You don't have to change them for different time periods. Okay. All right. So walk us through the SPI. You don't pay attention to the uh, the S and P futures at all. You you concentrate on the on the SPY. Yes. I I just I you know for whatever reason I never had uh, success trading the E minis. Um, it's it's really kind of a quirky uh, psychological heavy thing uh, that the trading the futures just has never. Uh, been been something I've been good at, and I, I you know I think that a lot of the stuff that occurs overnight um, tends to be mitigated the next day. Not always, but um, if I'm holding positions, then you know I I, I want to be aware of what's the trend for my stock. I mean, a lot of times we'll have the market down, and, and a certain stock will be up, and and then the market doesn't matter if you're picking stocks. The market, and, and you're doing a good objective job of doing that. The market itself doesn't matter so much. What I look at, though, is so, you know, if the market's giving me good long setups, then I'll, I'll say, well, what's the overall trend of the market? Does it, you know, does it uh, 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 fit in with what, what these stocks are saying? And then manage risk based on what I'm trading. I'm not interested in what the relationships are supposed to be. You know, the dollar's up, so gold's supposed to be down or right, whatever. Okay. If you're going to trade gold, trade gold. Um, because those relationships don't always exist, and people are just left scratching their heads. I think you have to manage the risk on whatever you're trading. And if we're in a downtrend in the S&P 500, and I see a good long setup, it'll tell me, well, just back off a little bit. Don't go as heavy. So I'll use that information uh, not to keep me out of the market, because I've done that, and it's cost me tremendous opportunity you know, by missing a good trade. Uh, instead, I'll, I'll adjust my position size to compensate for the greater market risk. Okay, could you just uh, just quickly kind of walk us through your, your your setups for today? What you're looking at? How you're approaching the market? Uh, big sell off yesterday. We did. Uh, I'm looking at the S and P futures. I uh, did take out uh, yesterday's low, kind of in a kind of scary area as far as supports concerned. Can you just quickly, you know, walk us through what you're looking at at the spider, and uh, you know, perhaps a potential trade for for our listeners? Yeah, definitely. I, well, first of all, we're we're below declining five-day moving average in the in the spy, the Russell, the Nasdaq, the financials, and the semiconductors, and those are the groups I look at. So I look at this market from an intermediate-term standpoint as guilty till proven innocent. The market has to prove itself really to to look at it and say I have a good chance, good probability of of getting good long setups. But it doesn't mean I'm going to ignore any long setups. So two set of stocks that look like they could be Poise for upside would include uh, a company called Biomarin Pharmaceuticals, BMRN. And I think that that probably has to take out not just yesterday's high, but uh, the high from uh, Wednesday, which was about $79.30. But the the problem is here we are at $77.80. That's $1.50 higher. So I'm not sure there's going to be a good tight stop to keep at that point. At this point, I would say a stop goes... Uh, just under yesterday's low, because that's where we have a higher low at a five-day moving average, um, and that's at about 77. So do I want to risk two and a half points? I'm not sure, but that's one I'm looking at. Another long setup would be Kamiko CCJ. 
Uh, this one broke out of a, a multi-year uh, base on the uh, weekly time frame by getting uh, above about 22 and a half. And it consolidated for about a week and a half and just started getting going again yesterday. So on this one, I think that you could probably buy this above about 25.20 with a stop of about 24.80 is the way it's looking right now. So a real tight stop. And uh, that, you know, those are the types of opportunities I'm looking for. So those are a couple long setups. Short side, a uh, company called LKQ Corp. LKQ is the symbol. If you look at that daily chart, it's below the declining 10, 20, 50, 100, 150, 200 day moving average. So it's in a primary downtrend. And if you back it up to a weekly chart, you see that it had a massive run from 5 to 35. And now it's in the stage 4 decline. So, you know, the primary trend is lower. And it broke a little bit of support yesterday at about 27. And it looks like it could continue uh, lower from here with a stop probably about 27.50. Um, I also, you know, interestingly, I think that Twitter, it's a tricky stock because it's pretty choppy and it's probably better for uh, day trades. But Twitter is kind of looking like it's hanging on the edge of a cliff here. Um, it, it's, it's, it is below its 10, 20, and 50-day moving average, and the 50-day moving average is declining. I think probably getting below about 53 uh, could send this back to test the lows for this year at about 40, about 50. Um, but we are below the volume-weighted average price since the company came public, and we've been trapped under that for the last month and a half. So that tells me that the average participant since the stock came public is actually losing money in this, and that's a good uh, barometer of the psychology, uh, I think, and, and the fact that we have it below declining moving averages says that, you know, near-term money is flowing out of the stock. So um, I'm looking at Twitter as a uh, potential short Navistar uh, also. So those are, you know, the, the types of ideas that I bring to my subscribers each day, and the, the emphasis is always uh, low risk. So I'll I'll say here, are, you know, these stocks are what I might consider official swing trades or watch list ideas. All the ideas for today are watch list ideas because I don't have a lot of confidence in the market. Even though we're in an intermediate term downtrend, the longer term trend is still real bullish. And, and, and this may be just another pullback. So we don't want to get too aggressively short when we're in a primary bull market because – We've seen what happens uh, to people who do that. They get squeezed over and over and over again. So you and, let and that you, pattern. Was, I'm sorry. You, so you let you let your charts dictate what you do. You don't you don't have a, a stable of stocks that you follow. You just have your setups. You look at your models, and you could care less if it's AAA or BBB. If you get your technical setup in it you're going into that trade. You could care less about the fundamentals. You could care less about the news. You're just going on, on your criteria. Is that correct? Pretty much now that, yeah. I do I do trade pretty aggressively Good. in Apple and Tesla weekly options. Uh, so those are the ones that I uh, have kind of my little junky trades in, and they're, they're you know, often quite profitable. I can, you see so many of these options double and triple in a day, on the weeklies in, in those two stocks. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in there. But generally, yes, uh, you know, one of the sites that I uh, manage is, is uh, onlypricepays.com. And that's something, a, a, a phrase I've been, I say over and over again, only price pays, because there's a tendency of people to really get distracted by the news and think that their opinion mat matters. We saw, you know, maybe this Crimea thing is going to be nothing. Maybe it's going to be like Greece last year or nuke North Korea when they said they were going to send nukes our way uh, or any of the other, you know, big headlines that the market just ignored uh, in 2013 and continued to climb that wall of worry. So, only price pays, and if we pay too much, it's good. To, I, I like to know the the headlines of the news, but I don't want to know the you know the, read the full story and start to form my own opinions about what it means and what it means to the market. I'm not an expert news guy. I'm an expert at looking at price action and figuring out who's in control, buyers or sellers, and then controlling risk based around that. That's to me, that's the professional. Uh, way of trading and not being distracted by every little news that's headline. Good. That's a good way to, to trade. Uh, quickly, from the, uh, the, the, the Tesla and Apple options, are you, uh, based on your technicals, you said you're trading the weeklies, are you 
Do you see ridiculous premiums and, li- and ridiculous moves? And you're short now, just taking in that time decay? Or are you on the other side of things saying, hey, I think you know Tesla can go to 420 this week. Uh, I'm going to put on a put spread and see if it comes in. Or are you kind of out there just selling that premium and, uh, and taking that in, t- playing it from the short side? Uh, a lot of questions there, but I keep it simple, real simple. I don't do any spreads at all. I don't do any type of hedging. To me, hedging is just a, a, a way to minimize, uh, you know, to, it complicates the trade. Now you're talking about two legs of an option rather than uh, saying, I think I have an advantage here that i looking at. Uh, I know what the primary trend is. I know what the trend of the five-day moving average where we are in relation to the volume-weighted average price for the last couple of days and uh, looking at, at pivot levels and a lot of the other, you know, it's, it's pretty simple stuff, but it's price-based. And I, I try to uh, look just to, to buy puts and calls, in straight directional. So I don't think there's massive premiums. What I look at is the, um, uh, the delta and say, I want to trade, uh, you know, I want to buy puts that are maybe uh, have a delta of 45 to 60 is generally what I'm trading. Now, on the last day, they tend to be, uh, you know, like, you know, deltas of 80 and 90. But it, it's, it, I, I, I think that those are where I do best. And they're typically slightly out of the money or just in the money uh, options. And it's, um, you know, you've got to be quick with them and you have to have confidence in your ability. It's not something that people should jump in and do is the day trade weekly options. It's, it's really, you know, I've been trading, you know, full time for 20 plus years. And, you know, I think back to your earlier question is what, what mistakes do I see people making? And I see people getting into a game that's beyond their ability. So they're going from the schoolyard shooting hoops with their buddies straight into the NBA game uh, which is the weekly options, yeah, okay. and they've got no business being there. Okay, that's that's excellent trips for tips for traders there. And uh, just uh, to close out this uh, very informative segment, um, any other tips for traders? Or if you want to talk about your site at all, uh, what what information uh, you you give out on that? Well, on alphatrends.net, I do a uh, weekly uh, video that I send out. You can sign up for, uh, there's a, a pop-up, annoying, one of those annoying pop-up boxes on my site uh, that will prompt you to get a swing trading guide, and then you're on the list to get that weekly uh, video. And for subscribers, I do a uh, daily video that looks at the market, and then another one where we look at these setups in depth, and, and I draw on the charts and show people exactly what's going on and what the logic behind the trade is and try to keep it as objective as possible. And by doing that for others, too, it helps me become a better trader because I'm being objective and I have to explain the, the, the logic and the reasoning behind a trade. So um, that's – and we have a chat room uh, that, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot different than I think what a lot of other people are used to with chat rooms. I call them chatter rooms. We talk about prices and things that are going to help us make money, not about uh, some, you know, yeah. I've seen some of these chat rooms where people are just, you know, it's nonstop flow and you can't discern what's the important information. So um, you can sign up for a seven-day free trial and cancel if you don't like it. It's not for everyone, but uh, we look at swing and day trade uh, opportunities. Hey, uh, Brian. But I have the emphasis on education, too. I'm, I just wanted to get that in there. Okay, Brian, uh, thank you for your uh, very straightforward analysis. I think that's uh, you know, what Dennis and I talk about a lot is uh, you know the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, and uh, that's kind of the way you approach the markets and had success trading. Thanks a lot for coming on for this extended period of time, and uh, we'll let you get ready for the open, and we'd certainly like to have you on again. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. It was fun. Okay. Thanks, Brian.